Friday was, I don't know, because I never wrote it down. Oh, lovely. Right, okay. So we were on the uh, triangle. Okay. Um, so I gave you, I have no idea what I gave you. So um, what did I give you? Three to, three to something. Three to ten, ex no. One to eight without seven and two. Oh yeah, and one part one. Without one part one, two and seven. Yeah. One part four, two and seven. Right, okay. Does anyone need me to do any bit of number one? Number three? Number four? Number five? Yeah. Number five. Right, so. A is a point zero zero, so A is a point zero zero, right? B is a point four minus one. Uh, C is a point two three, and D is minus two four. Are the vertices of a quadrilateral? Find the area of the quadrilateral by dividing it into two triangles A, B. C, D. I'm going to do a quick sketch, okay? Quick sketch tells you exactly what you need to know. So I'm going to do not not 4 minus 1, so that's cross 4. And you can see it's a very quick sketch because I'm putting in the numbers as I'm drawing it. So that's A, B, across 2, up 3. So 1, 2, 3. Cross 2 up 3, that's C, and D is minus 2, 4, across to minus 2, and up to 4. So minus 2, 4 is up here somewhere, so that's D, right, and that's a quadrilateral. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Um, when I divide it into two triangles, I'm going to put no naught in both triangles because it'll save me a job, right? Okay, so I'm going to put no naught. I'm going to divide it there, okay? Now, I could have div divided it by drawing our joining B to D. I could have divided it that way, but I'll end up doing the translation then, right? Okay, so I want to do the lazy way about it. So I'm going to do A, B, and C as one triangle. Right, okay, and I'm going to do A, C, and D as the second triangle, and I'm going to add my two answers. They say it's a quadrilateral, so you can't assume it's a parallelogram, even though it kind of kind of does look like one, but you can't assume it is, okay, unless they tell you. They tell the quadrilateral, so it's just a four-sided or four-sided shape. So you can't assume, you know, it might look like a quadrilateral. I don't know, is it? Is it? So you do not not. B is 4 minus 1, and C is 2, 3. Ignore the not naught. Call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to put the formula up here. It's a half. Take the positive value of x1, y2, minus x2, y1. So that would be a half. Two straight lines just mean take the positive value. So it's x1, which is 4, multiplied by y2, which is 3. Then I have a minus sign. Then it's uh, x2, which is 2, multiplied by y1, which is minus 1. Yeah. What's this called? What's this? Area of a triangle. Were you in Friday? There's a video. Watch it. Right. Okay. So that would be, into the calculator with that, that's 12 plus 2, which is 14, half of 14, which is 7. Is that okay? Right here, and um, over here I'm using A, C, D, so A is not naught, C is 2, 3, and D is minus 2, 4. So X1, Y1, X2, Y2, so it's a half times x1 is 2 times y2 is 4 minus x2 is minus 2 times y1 which is 3 
two straight lines, two fours are eight plus six, which is half 14, which is also seven. Right, so they, it is actually a parallelogram, right? Because the area of the two triangles turned out to be the same. So if you add seven and seven, you'll get 14. Is that all right? Yes. Um, is A always going to be zero, zero? Uh, Yeah, it has to be. Again, watch the video. Right, we did all that on Friday. Okay, so that's your homework tonight. Catch up on Friday. Watch the video. Girls, I know if you're sick, you're not going to be watching the video, but in order to catch up, like, it's brilliant. The class is there, like, so you just need to do it. That goes for everyone, not just you. Right, is that all right? Okay, right, so I, I'm i putting up the videos for a reason, so I don't have to re-go over stuff. Right, okay. So, yes, to answer your question, one of the points has to be not not, and if it's not not not, you need to make it not not. We'll see that in a minute. Right, any questions? Whoever asked me to do question, whatever that is, are we all happy? Okay, so that was number four. Yeah, anyone for number five? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, so. Right, so number five. Um, A is not not. B is one six. And C is minus one K plus one. Are the vertices of a triangle. If the area, so this time they're telling me the answer. So the area is equal to seven. Find two values for K. There's a hint in that, okay? Find two values for K, okay? So yes, one of them is not not, so I can ignore it. Great, that means I don't have to do a translation, so I call this X1, Y1, and this is X2, Y2. So it's a half times X1 is one, times Y2 is K plus one, minus X2 is minus one, times y y2 is six no i'm after doing that no i'm okay aren't i yeah it's x2 y1 yeah it's fine right okay but you know when you work it out the answer is going to be seven is that all right okay so a half times um multiply in so multiply out the brackets here it's k plus one and here it's minus, no, it's plus, minus five minus is plus six ones are six. Is that okay? Equals seven, right? Okay, so that's K plus seven. So it's a half of K plus seven equals seven, right? I can get rid of that half now, right? How will I get rid of that half? I could multiply everything by, multiply across by two. So multiplying across by two, I get K plus seven is equal to 14. Yeah? Okay, so then this is a modular equation. Modular equation in the test, what do, what do you do with a modular equation? It could be positive, it could be negative, so what do you do to make sure it's positive? Square, square both sides. So you square both sides, so square that side, square that side. So we've just done that in algebra three. Square the first, twice the first by the second, square the last, plus 49, square one, 14, you get 196. Okay, then bring it over. So I get k squared plus 14k plus 49 minus 196 will give me minus 147. No, yeah, maybe. Okay, I'll answer myself, so. Yeah? No, it's a modular equation from algebra three. You know, the two straight lines means take the positive value. So you don't know, is that plus seven or minus seven? So, the, yeah, so you're making sure it's positive, right? Okay, because it could be, it's the modular, it could be seven or it could be minus seven. Now there's two ways to solve it, but I think the best way is to do the same way for the everything and that's square both sides, okay? Right, so then I need to factorize K and K, 7 and 21, I think, yeah, and then I want to end up with plus 14, so plus 21 minus 7 will give me plus 14, isn't that right? Okay, let each bracket equal 0, so you get K is 7, 
our k could be minus 21. And there's my two values for k. Is that right? Alternatively, girls, you know, when you get here, you can get, you can split that into k plus 7 equals 14. Or you could say, well, k plus 7 could be minus 14. Okay? That's the second way to solve it. And then you solve both of those. Okay? But I, I just, I'm a big fan of squaring both sides because sometimes you can't do it this way. You have to square both sides. Okay? So I'm a big fan of let's do the same thing all the time. Is that all right? Are we good? Right? Questions? No. That was number six. And uh, number eight. We're okay. Number eight is fine. And uh, number, was that it? Just for eight. But I understand how to get to the peak. Like, but um, what do you say, like, just for, it said, like, um, uh, you got the area to be zero, I presume, um, that the, the points are collinear, right? As in collinear means they're all in the same line. So there's actually, there's actually no triangle, right? So if you draw the points, there's not naught is probably here. One, three, it'll be here. And two, six will be here. So when you get the area of the triangle, the area of the triangle is zero. So that means they don't make a triangle because the area is zero, which means they're collinear. They're all in the same line. Is there two L's in collinear or not? I can't remember. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They're all in the same line. Right? Is that okay? I think there's two L's, is there? There's two L's. Thank you. Yeah. The old English wouldn't be great. Right? Are we okay? Everyone to their strengths, yeah? Right. Okay. Right, um, moving on to the next section. Okay, so the next section is all revision, but there's a fierce amount of information in it. Right, okay, so I have a fierce amount of revision to go through. Right, in 20 minutes, we probably spent three weeks in, in junior search. Okay, so I'm going to throw it all out to you in 20 minutes. So it's up to you to spend the time tonight putting it back into your head if it's gone, if you're raised it after junior search that never happened. So you raised it in the March of junior search year, was it? Yeah, you didn't need it. Right, okay. Um, so the equation of a line. So off you go to the log tables and you get the formula for the equation of a line. So the equation of a line is y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Is that okay? Right. What do you need to fill out that formula, please? You need, you need one point, don't you? You need one point, which you call x1, y1. And what does m stand for? Slope. You need the slope. Right, okay, so stop right there and I'll just remind you what equation of a line means, right? If the equation of a line was x plus y equals 5, right? What it means is that at every point on that line, if you add the x coordinate and the y coordinate, you get 5. So 0, 5 would be on that line, wouldn't it? Okay, because 0 plus 5 gives me 5. 1, 4 would be on that line, wouldn't it? Right, what else would be on that line? 2, 3. What about minus 1? Minus 1 what? 6. Right, okay, so the equation of a line tells you how, what you, how the x and y coordinates on that line are related. And it's true for, it could be 100, 100 minus 95 would be on that line. Do you all see how I got it? Right, you just pick an x and the y, they have to add to give you 5. Right, if I had an equation, 2x minus y equals 4. This one's a bit harder to figure out. But if I double the x coordinate, take away the y coordinate, I'll get 4. Right, so if I just take um, 2, 0 is on that line. 
okay? Because if I double the x, then take away the y, I'll get 4, right? Okay, if I get, um, wait, now I see, 5, if I double the x and take away the y, the answer will be 4. So 5, 6 is on that line, right? Okay, this is just me trying to explain to you what equation of a line is. It's just a, 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 an equation that um, relates the x and y coordinate, tells you how they, how they pan out to be that line. Every equation is unique. There's only one line in the whole plane that, that matches that particular equation. Is that right? It's not like we have a load of searches and we have a load of, I don't know, Deirdre's or something, right? Okay, it's like there's one equation for every line. It's unique, right? Got it? Right, okay. Right, remember how to do it. Okay, so example one. Find the equation of the line. of the line through through uh, minus three one with a slope of two thirds. Is that okay? So I'm going straight to a hard one, right? As in the slope is a fraction, okay? So we have x1, y1, okay? So remember you fill in for x1 and y1, you never fill in for x and y, Right, and you fill in for m the slope. So it's y minus 1 equals m is 2 thirds into x minus minus 3. Do you all see how I've ended up with two minuses there? The first minus came from the formula. The second minus is part of x1. Is that all right? Okay, but two minuses in a row will give me a plus. Does anyone now? Can I just say, if the question was, find the equation of the line, I've now got the right answer and I'm done, right? But you're never going to get anything as easy as that. You're then going to have to use the equation to do something. So we need to be able to sort it out. Does anyone remember how you sort it out? Because there's a fraction, you'll get a common denominator and even up both sides and drop the common denominator. What's the shortcut? Does anyone remember the shortcut? No. You take the three underneath the line and you multiply up top by three at this side. And you leave the two over this side and you get x plus three. Any recollection at all? Any lights go on? Yeah, a little bit, hopefully. So then you multiply out, so you get three y minus one equals, no you don't, you get three x minus three equals two x plus six and then we normally give it x term y term equals or x term y term number equals zero so 2x over is minus 2x then i have the y term which is plus 3y and then i have a minus 3 here already and the plus 6 comes over and becomes a minus not minus 6 even equals zero and then that's minus 2x plus 3y minus 9 equals zero and that's your answer is that right is that okay a lot of the time you you might need to sort it out here will be fine but you need to know how to right so remember when it's a fraction you know you could multiply into the bracket get a common denominator put everything over the common denominator drop the common denominator i went straight to the shortcut this is the shortcut right yes yeah Okay, so I went straight to the shortcut. Is that okay? Do you remember that? Vaguely. 
Right, okay. Um, uh, did I do positive and negative slope with you the other day? I did, didn't I? Yeah, yeah I talked about positive and negative slope, didn't I? Yeah. Right, okay. Can I move this up? Right. Yeah. What's the story? Did I talk about parallel lines and perpendicular lines? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right, I'm ready for uh, example two. Um, find the equation of the line Minus 2, 3, which is perpendicular to, actually I'll go parallel for a minute. Okay, find the equation of the line through minus 2, 3, which is parallel to that line. Okay. So, I'm looking for a whole, an equation of a new line, right, okay, I have the point, but what's the other thing I need to know to get the equation of a line, I need to know what, point and a slope, right, okay, so they haven't told me a slope, in example one, they told me what the slope was, right, example two, they told me the point, but they didn't tell me the slope, right, but what they did tell me is parallel to that line, what do we know about parallel lines? They've got the same slope, right? Okay, is that right? Okay, so how do I get the slope of a line from the equation? This is why we're doing this example. How do you get the slope of a line through from an equation? Does anyone remember? Does anyone remember that you rearranged it so that y equals mx plus c? So you rearrange it so you have y equals the x term plus a number. Does anyone vague recollection know? Not really. Right, okay. So you need to rearrange it. As I say, this is the whole junior chart in 20 minutes. Okay. So you need to rearrange it so you have y equals everything else. So leave the y term. Right. Bring over the x and it becomes minus 2x. Bring over the plus 5, it becomes minus 5. Now I don't want minus y equals, I want plus y equals. So what will I do? change all the signs. So y is equal to 2x plus 5. The slope, now once you have y on its own equal to everything else, the slope is the number in front of x. So the slope of this line is what? What number is in front of x? 2. The slope of that line is 2. Is that right? Okay. Um, shortcuts to getting the slope from an equation. You know when the equation is like this? It's ax plus by plus c equals naught. This formula is not in the log tables, but the slope is minus a over b. It's very handy, right? Okay, it's very handy. Okay, it's not in the log table, so you have to remember it. Okay, so the slope is minus a over b. Where A is a number in front of X and B is a number in front of Y. Okay, so the slope, I pretend I just didn't do all that. The slope of this line would be a minus sign. A, A is a number in front of X. So what number is in front of X? 2. All over B, what number? B is a number in front of Y. What's the number? Minus 1. So minus 2 over minus 1 is plus 2. It's a lot shorter, isn't it? Okay, so the slope is minus a over b. As I say, that formula is not in the log table. So if you want to use it, you need to remember it. It's fierce handy though. It'll save you a lot of time because you won't have to go through all this. Yes, you all right? Was there a question? Yes. Yeah, you will minus minus. So just 
and just using that you needn't bother writing this down so if I had minus 3x plus 4y minus 1 equals 0 the slope is minus a over b so here it would be minus minus 3 all over 4 which would be plus 3 over 4 is that all right if I had something like 2x minus 7y plus 4 equals 0 the slope would be minus a over b so a is a number front of x so it's a minus and a 2 b is minus 7 so it'd be minus 2 over minus 7 which is plus 2 over 7 okay that's fear it's a fierce handy formula okay as in as opposed to if you didn't know that formula you'd have to go minus 7y equals minus 2x minus 4 and then you'd have to divide everything by minus 7 and they cancel and you'd say the slope was minus 2 over minus 7 which is plus 2 sevenths is that right okay it, there isn't much in it but it's very handy if you ask me is that all right okay do we get the handiness as in do we understand what that means okay right back to this the question so the question was find the equation of the line through minus two three right okay which is parallel to this line so i found the slope of that line i'm not looking for that line though i'm looking for a parallel line but the slope of a parallel line is the c isn't it so if the slope of this line was two what's the slope of a parallel line also two isn't it so it goes through two it goes through the point minus two three and we call this x1 y1 and you fill in y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1 so that's y minus 3 equals 2 into x minus minus 2 so that's x minus minus 2 is plus 2 right and then you multiply out y minus 3 equals i move it up 2x plus 4 and then rearrange so you get minus 2x plus y minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7 equals 0 is that okay right okay example 3 right okay we're going to go with the same line same point right but this time it's going to be perpendicular yeah okay are we ready no nope. Can I go? Yeah? Okay, right, okay, so this is example three, but it's the same and um, the same question, except this time, same point, find the equation of the line through minus two, three, but this time it's perpendicular to this line. Okay, so it's perpendicular to this line. So we're looking for an equation of a new line, right, okay, that's perpendicular to this, the, the given line. Right, so you go to the whole rigmarole again and you get the slope. The slope turned out to be 2, okay? So you can use y equals mx plus c or you can use minus a over b, right? Okay, so this time it's perpendicular. Do you remember how to get the slope of a perpendicular line? So if the slope of this line is 2, what's the slope of any line that's perpendicular to that? Remember, turn it upside down and change the signs. So if it was 2, remember 2 is 2 over 1. What's the perpendicular 
2 over 1, turn it upside down, change the sign, what'll I get? Minus a half. So the slope of your new line is minus a half. Sorry, did I take that away too fast? It's the same as the first, first bit anyway. Right, are we good? Can I go up? Right, so it's x1, y1, slope is now minus a half. So I go y minus y1 is three equals slope is now minus a half into x minus minus two. Okay, so the first minus came from the formula, the second minus is part of x1. So two minus in a row will give me a plus. Remember when I have a fraction, right? Shortcut, right? This is not, um, this is probably not the proper way to do it, but everyone uses the shortcut. So the, like the proper way is to multiply into the brackets, get a common denominator, even up both sides, drop the common denominator. Shortcut, right, which are very handy, right, you bring what's underneath the line, which is a two, and you multiply up this side by two, right, equals, you leave the minus one here, and x plus two. Now, question people always ask me is, where does the minus, does the minus stay with the top, or does it go with the bottom? Either, right, you can do either, or as long as you only put one minus, you put it with the top, or with the bottom, don't put it with both because they cancel each other out. Okay? Multiply out, you get 2y minus 6 equals minus x minus 2. Then you move everything over. x term is positive now. Then you plus 2y. And then I have minus 6 plus 2 when it comes over, which would be minus 4 equals 0. And that's your answer. Okay, is that all right? Okay, Ben's about to go. Right, okay, so homework page 135, 134, one, 134, and have a go at five. I was going to do an example like five, but I ran out of time. So have a go and I'll do an example like number five tomorrow. Okay, but have a go. And again, take a picture, stick it up. I don't look at them every night, but I will look at them. <laughs>